All right, this is great so far. So now let's go and, you know, get some fixtures. You know, let's go shopping within the blocks that we have. So let's start with the kitchen. So I'm going to grab this, you know, this block. I want a double sink. It's always nice to have double sink. Um, I'm going to grab the dishwasher. Let's get this range, this fridge. I have smaller fridges, smaller ranges. But, you know, for this kitchen size uh, and this unit size, I'm happy to use, you know, a little bigger elements. Okay, and I'm going to drag them in, you know, and then place them here somewhere. Right, I'm going to switch my layer to the furniture layer. Oh, okay, so I have duplicates layers. So what you can do, okay, is do this. There was a setting to merge them. Oh, it's I need to do it from here. So you know how I have furniture and fern. So I'm just going to get rid of the one called furniture. I'm going to say I would like you to combine it. Create group. Okay, so I need to make this the current. And then so it's earlier. Okay, here we go. So as long as it's not the current layer, you're able to combine it. So now I'm going to do combine with layer. AutoCAD is asking me which layer you want to combine it with, and I'm going to say just combine it with A, furniture, and whatever elements I had on that one, they will all go to that one. Uh, like on the previous layer, it will go now to this. And like I told you, you want to have less layers. You, wanna, you don't want to have more layers, maybe not more than 20, okay? So that's that. All right, so now, now that we did the furniture, we're on the furniture layer, I'm going to come here and do um, two feet out from the kitchen to do my casework. So this is like my countertop. And then the sink, you know, we said we're going to put it right in the middle to the window. So I'm going to, I placed it, I'm going to, you know, push it out one inch. And then the fridge, I would like it in the corner like this. And then I'm going to move it from here to here. And then I'll push it out from the wall, like one inch from the left, and then the back wall, a couple inches, two inches. And then I'll modify this casework. I'll modify this also one inch. You know, you don't want it to be like, if you want to go in this detail, to this level of detail, you can do it. But, you know, for me, I like to represent it, you know, similar to reality, to the, like as much as possible without going too crazy. All right. So now we're going to place this here. I'm going to move it also. So let's move it to the corner. I think this one is 30 inches. I'll double check in a second. I'll move it away one foot from the wall. And then I want to place the dishwasher somewhere here. Okay, I'm realizing maybe our kitchen is a little too small. Maybe like the settings, the way I did it, it's not going to work. But that's fine. I'll just add an island here. I'll just do a rectangle or a polyline. So let's do four feet. Let's do another four feet. Maybe that's too big for an island. That ah, should be a good size. Let's do four feet like this. Okay, maybe not an ideal design. Maybe some of you guys are going to think of a better design. That would be great. Good for you and good for your client. Right, and then I'm going to push this away, you know, three feet clearance. So it's just comfy to work around it. I'll stretch it one foot here and one foot here. Uh, it's kind of within the entry, so it's not going to look super nice, but, you know, up to you and to your client what you guys want to do, right? So now the dishwasher, I'll place it, I'll place it potentially behind the sink, okay? Again, this might not be an ideal design, but I'm not going too crazy about design right now. I'm really just trying to show you my personal process, all right? So now that we have this, uh, I can place some dimensions, so, you know, we see how the island is working with with the with the rest of the space it should be right in the center so this should be four three as well yep so this is good i'm gonna hit another save because i just finished another space i'll actually show you if i want to go even more detailed within the kitchen for interior designers um i'll just go a little further in this so let's say we want to think of the um the base cabinets okay i'll switch my layer to the hidden layer so hidden layer is this one, and why is it hidden? Because it will show us, you know, dashed lines, okay? And dashed lines are represent often hidden objects within your drawing, all right? So let's do here a polyline. So I'm going to do one foot away, and this is like the first base cabinet. And then I'm going to offset it 30 inches to the left, and that's the size of the, uh, the, size of the range uh, or the stove. 
and then here I'm gonna offset this let's say two feet okay what do we have here so let's offset this four feet and I'll add dimensions in a second okay so let's switch our scale and add some dimensions to make this easier okay so now we have here one foot we have 30 inches we have here this much two feet we have here four feet which is what I want under the sink but I want it in the center I don't want it to be this far and these dashed lines again I'm trying to represent the base cabinets all right so I will need to move this uh, two inches potentially and then this two inches as well just want to make sure it's in the middle compared to the window okay so five and seven so we're gonna need to push one inch to the right and then again this one one inch to the right so this is like our base cabinet now this is how things are looking like so i have one foot two six one nine four feet two foot one three two um you know i can modify things to accommodate a better kitchen layout but for now i think i'm happy with it uh, i could have fit the dishwasher here so but it's okay i'm just gonna leave it uh, under the island here okay so things are looking good so now let's try to add some upper cabinets so let's add let's even add a hood so we have a hood block here somewhere i'm gonna copy this guy you know you always copy oh i didn't even copy i moved them yep so i want to talk about this if you notice I didn't move these blocks. You always want to copy them. You never come shop for them and take the original with you. You just leave them here because you're just going to copy and you might need them later. So don't just grab everything with you. I'm going to place this here. And this hood is special. It actually has something called a mask. So it will cover whatever it sits on. So in this case, when I put it above the stove, it's actually hiding, hiding it under, which is pretty cool and which is why I created it this way. Let's say this hood is smaller than the stove. Let's say I want to modify it. So to do that, I will do block edit. And then here, let's see what's the size of this. Now the dimension is tiny because in the block editing space, the scale by default is one to one. So I'll switch it to half inch scale. Then let's dimension this. Okay, so it's two feet. So what I would like it to be is, you know, two feet three like this. So it's matching the size. Um, if I delete this polyline, this is the wipeout object or the masking object. This is the one that's allowing us to hide stuff. It literally looks like a rectangle because, you know, that's how I drew it. But the wipeout, I'm going to do undo to bring the polyline. One more undo. Okay, the polyline. It's literally sitting right under the polyline. All right. So this is good. Get rid of the dimension. Uh, I modify things to the right, to the left. I'm going to hit save, hit X, and that will modify my block. But note, when you do something like this, you're going to also modify the original block. So if I come to this hood right here, it's also modified it. So when you do a block edit, sometimes you want to modify the block or create a new one. So this block name is hood. I could have created a new one and called it, you know, 30 inches wide. So that way I update my library. I'll probably do that and I'll update the template later. And then another save. This is looking great. Now I'm going to use the hidden line to represent upper cabinets. So I'll do here, I'll do like a one foot. I'll do here, whatever we have between the hood and the window, because you don't want to put something right where the window is. And then I'll do something like this, stretch it. So now I have upper cabinet above the fridge and above the hood and above the island. And this is looking great. So now let's go get some laundry items again for shopping you're not taking the original just leave it there copy it place it here i'm just gonna place them visually it really doesn't matter because you know they're roughly gonna go here i think i have them at two feet six each of them and now we're gonna get some bathroom stuff all right so we're gonna get this toilet let's get this tub for example and then let's get so i have a double sink here let's see if this is gonna fit six feet yeah it's not gonna fit i know that already because our bathroom is small. So I'm going to copy this one instead. Okay, then we're going to grab these guys, put them here. Then let's start with the, the tub. So we're going to rotate it like this. And then I'm going to push it up to the corner. Okay, and then toilet seat. Oh, this dynamic toilet seat. Oh, this one comes from AutoCAD, that's why. Okay, so I'm just going to place it somewhere here. And then I'm going to move it away like 15 inches because that's the minimum that you're allowed to do. 
then I'm gonna grab this put it here so this island is not really this countertop is not gonna work or this vanity because it's too close to the toilet so I'll get rid of it then I'll get something smaller I can modify it but let's just copy this one okay this should be smaller and should fit nicely okay we modify it move it okay all right, this is a lot of space, so maybe we push it even further. Like maybe one foot. Okay, maybe three inches to the left. And I'm happy with this, and I'm going to hit the save button. All right, so now we continue. We can actually start placing some furniture. So I'll, gra I'll grab this. Let's actually get a bigger bed. And then let's say we want the sofa. Oh, the sofa is not blocked. Okay, so we can group it for now. Okay, and then we're gonna copy them like I mentioned okay I don't like to place furniture you know usually when I'm designing like architectural floor plans but you know it's good to reference for people to make sense of the space to also include furniture even though like plan checkers don't care to see furniture for your project okay so but you know this is still kind of helpful it's really helpful for you and for the designer to make sure the space is going to work out all right so this is good so i place this in the middle you know i can add you know maybe an end table here it's a switch or layer so i can right click and say make layer count oh, it's not from here i'm gonna do lay y so I'm, i want to switch my layer based on this one which is the furniture layer and then I'm going to do a circle, let's say one foot, okay, maybe too big. Let's do eight inches radius and table somewhere here. Again, this is very tight. I know this is not an amazing, amazing design. But again, we're trying to do the most with what we have. So this is right here. Okay, this is good. You can start adding lights and whatnot. But, you know, don't want to go too crazy about the interior side of it. So I'm going to add, let's actually here add uh, a rectangular end table. So let's do here one foot. I'm using rectangle command to do what I'm doing right now. Then I'm going to move it right beside the bed. Move it here. Move it three inches away. And then I'm going to push it away from the bed uh, three inches maybe. Let's say I add a light here. Okay, four inches. You know, this is how I would represent a light. I will do something like this. Okay, like a lamp, table lamp. I'll group it or block it. I'll probably block it, but not in this scenario because I'm trying to show you guys this as quickly as possible. And then another save, and I'm happy with the space so far. So I just realized that I don't have a closet, and I'm definitely going to need a closet. Um, so I can modify the design, but anyway, I could have added it here. So let's say, let's actually do a quick modification. So let's push away. Two feet from here let's see how much we're gonna be left with we're gonna be left with 11 so that should be good let's just switch our current layer to the wall layer okay so because i did the mistake here and we do need a closet you need a closet in a bedroom so here i'm gonna do let's say eight feet okay something like this oh it didn't switch the layer that's fine we can just match the properties i'm gonna do an offset five inches and then I need to push this away a little bit more, like six inches. How much did I have it originally? Six inches. So this is going to be from here to here. Okay, this is the dimension I was using. This is here. Oh, it's seven inches now. That's fine. We can just push this, you know, one inch. Okay. And then let's see here. Do we have two feet? Yes, we do. We're using a different scale. So I'll switch back to quarter. So I get back to this size of a dimension. Two feet one, I'm happy with it, that's fine. Okay, and then let's say I have here like a linen, like a linen closet on the opposite. So let's do one foot. Maybe let's do, it looks like we have more space, so this is good. I'll do this, okay. Then I'll trim this portion, I'll use the match properties like this. I'll extend this. Um, let's do one more trim, okay. And then I'll join all of these guys. They should be fine. Oh, we need to do a trim here. Okay, let's join them. Let's join here. Okay, and then for, you know, casework, I'm using the furniture layer. So I'll just do something here and I can write that this is a linen. Let's do a polyline. Let's do um, four inches. Let's put a closet door. We're gonna switch the layer to it in a second. 
Let's see how wide this closet door is 74. Let's just make it 7 clear. So I'll push down and up by 2 inches using the stretch command. So this is good, 7 feet. Let's make sure we match the layer. And then we join these guys like this. Okay. And then to place the closet door, I'll switch to the doors layer. So I'll do something like this. And then I'll push this to the middle. Okay, I'll push this down a little bit, maybe like by half an inch. Okay, just to represent the closet door. And then I'll copy this from here, you know, to here. And this is how I usually represent a closet door. All right, so this is looking good. And then I will modify, I need to add one layer, one more layer of the dimensions, which is just to represent that this bedroom, how big it is at this moment. So let's do from here to here. Okay, and then I'll stretch the closet dimension even further. So now this is, you know, for the most part, it's as clear as possible for everyone to look at. And another save, and we keep going. So now I'm going to add text for this space. So I'll just do text, and then here we're going to name the rooms, basically. So I'm going to do bedroom. Okay, it's our only bedroom. So I'm going to switch the layer to notation. And then I'll switch my current layer to annotation. And then you literally just grab the text basically and you just copy it everywhere. So this is obviously living, kitchen, you know, foyer or entry, or entry however you want to call it. And then here we're going to do bath. You know, you can write the whole thing or stick to something um, to like an acronym. Laundry, kitchen, kitchen. And then this is foyer or entry. And then here, living room. It's showing you literally different ways of writing things. So this is good at this point. Now I'm going to use the hatch to actually hatch the walls. So I'll do hatch. And then I will do, I will not click within the walls. I will do select boundary. So I will do this, this. And because we joined everything, this should come out a single hatch for the entire thing. I should have done this before I put the, the furniture and, you know, the dimensions like this, that would have made it much easier because, you know, we could, we wouldn't have to, you know, snipe it. But pretty much this is how this is looking like. And let's say I undo this. I'm going to go back. Um, I'm not going to hit the save. So let's say I want to do this while all the stuff are frozen. So I will do layer freeze. I will hide this text. Oh, I can't freeze my current layer. So let's switch to the layer zero. Then I freeze these, these, like all the layers, the hidden like even windows and doors, you see everything is pretty easy. So now when I do hatch and I do select boundary, I think I can do this and it will work. Oh, that works. I, know, I understand in my head it works, but I didn't see it. So that's why I wasn't sure. So now we're gonna, you know, unfreeze all the layers we froze. Freezing, as you can tell at this point, is very, very helpful, especially in these scenarios. Okay, these small dimensions, I'm okay with them. Okay, and I'm gonna hit uh, save one last time. And now this is ready for stage two, which is basically to place it on a paper, uh, but I'll leave that to another video. And thank you for watching.